Hey everybody, welcome to I Dream of Genie Mistakes, Goofs, and Oddities Part 4, Season 4. So now we're going to check out the episodes all through Season 4 and see what kind of fun little mistakes and goofs that we can find throughout this season. Now, this is episode one called UFO Genie, and it's such a great episode because Major Nelson, Major Healy, and Genie are mistaken as Martians, and they land in this fantastic flying saucer prop. So this was a full-size prop that they actually used for this show. It even has a working hatch, as you can see there. And I'm pretty sure they used that exterior um, UFO prop for uh, a Brady Bunch episode, if I can remember. Later on in the episode, Clem keeps chasing Genie around, but if you look at the bed, the head of the bed right here, it's right up against the wall. But in the next scene, when Genie releases Clem, we can see at the head of the bed, there's all this space for Genie to run completely around the, the head of the bed right up here. So there's all this room over here. So they didn't quite get that right. This is episode two, and it's called Genie and the Wild Pip Chicks. And <laughs> this episode is so hilarious because there's just so much craziness that happens in it. But on the right here, we see Rita Shaw return, but this time she returns as Colonel Finch. The last time we saw her was during the four-part safe episode from season three when she played the, the lady that works at the junkyard. Now, Genie's mother appears in this episode once again, but this time... For the first time, she's played by Barbara Eden herself, so this is the third time that her mother appears. The first two times were played by two different actresses, and by this time now, Barbara Eden herself is playing the mother role. <laughs> now, when Dr. Bellows is looking at the recipe to make these pip chicks, which, by the way, I love the name of the candy, how they're called pip chicks. I think that's hilarious. But he's looking over the recipe, and as you can see here, the, the writing is, you know, some kind of a genie writing or something but yet dr bellows doesn't have a problem reading it because he talks about how crazy it is that it takes uh something like four truckloads of dates and a half an acre of oranges it's just absolutely hilarious this scene here is particularly funny because they keep going around in circles <laughs> while this burrow is stirring the mixture and um colonel finch says you know it's it's the way the recipe if the recipe calls for a burrow to stir it, then that's what they're going to do. But they, it's just funny how they went around. I wonder how many times they had to do this scene. Maybe they got away with it with just one. I don't know, but it's pretty funny. When Jeannie is inside the post office box, we see here that a letter back in the day only cost six cents to mail back in 1968. So it's really neat to see that, that old stamp. At the end of the episode, when Major Nelson is spraying this a uh, fire hydrant everywhere. I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if these are the fire hydrants they use for Genie's smoke because as you can see there's like powder that comes out of it and a lot of times in Genie's smoke you can see that same powder that comes out of there but this was a great way that they ended that. In this episode titled Tomorrow is Not Another Day, Major Nelson and Genie open the front door and as you can see in the background of the house is just a black wall back here. You can actually see their shadows against this black wall. So now this was the actual exterior set that was on the Warner's, uh, Warner Brothers Ranch, which was in the Screen Gems Ranch. But you can really see their shadow back there. So it was the actual house that they used for the exterior, but I guess there wasn't an interior for it back then. I, now, um, the house actually is one of the few houses on the Warner Brothers Ranch that's a full house. And I think there was some offices in there, but as I mentioned in previous videos, sadly, all of this is going to get destroyed. Um, Warner Brothers has decided they're going to demolish this whole area where they had all these famous homes that they used for famous TV shows and movies, and they're going to demolish it and turn it into some studios or something. I'm really sad that they are no longer going to have this location here because just so many iconic things were going on. Also, if you look uh, at the top up here, you'll notice that you can see a partial roof of what looks like another building behind there, and you can actually see some ladders. So you can actually see the facade of another set in behind there. I think the Flying Nun Convent Santanco set was back there, but uh, that might be part of it. I'm not sure. We also see a cameo appearance of Rosie Greer in this episode, who was a famous football player back in those days. This episode is called Abdullah, and interestingly, in this outdoor scene, where Major Healy is talking to one of his girlfriends, you can actually see the Screen Gems logo back here on this building. So that is the Screen Gems logo, and Genie was filmed on the Screen Gems studio. So this was obviously their back lot set, and somehow that little sign ended up in this scene. 
It's also interesting to note that the little baby that played Abdullah in this episode would be 54 years old today if he's still alive. This episode is called, Have You Heard the One About the Used Car Salesman? Now, once again, we see that the shadow of the boom microphone appears up here in the corner, and you can see it alternating between Barbara Eden and Larry Hagman in which way that it's uh, facing. And it's there throughout the whole scene as well. <laughs> so they do show up a lot in this show, that's for sure. It's interesting that in this episode we have two guest stars, and they both were previously shown or seen on the TV show McHale's Navy. This is Bob Hastings who played Carpenter. And we have Carl Ballantyne here as well, who was one of McHale's crew members. This is episode six, and it's titled Jin Jin Go Home. Now, this is the first time we get to see cute little Jin Jin here. This is Genie's dog, and he's a genie dog. He has magic powers. Later in the episode, when Major Healy and Major Nelson are in the anti-gravity room, they're going to be floating up in the air, but you can very clearly see the wires that are attached to Bill Daly and Larry Hagman here. And it's almost like they didn't even try to hide them because they really catch the light. And you'll see them, especially on Major Nelson, you can really see how they reflect on the light up in the upper area. In the close-up here, you can once again see the wires, especially on Bill Daly. They look more black right here, and there's some on Larry Hagman. Now, you'll also notice this little square right here, and it's pretty obvious, and there's a reason for that to be there. And what it is, is it's a board that just slides out. I'm assuming it's a board that slides out. So when Jeannie appears, it makes it look like she's floating, but Barbara Eden is actually sitting on that board. And then when they need to hide it again, they just slide it back into the wall. So when she disappears here, you'll see where the board was. So it just slides in there. It's a pretty clever way to make it look like she's floating. Later on, Dr. Bellows ends up floating as well, and you can see really see the wires on Hayden Rourke here. They're very, very visible, especially when he goes down right there. <laughs> this episode is titled The Strongest Man in the World, and the guest star in this episode is boxer Jerry Quarry. When Major Nelson's training, Jeannie is hiding inside this locker in the back. But now in the background, you can see that it's actually closed. Now she's looking out and see how it's totally closed back here? But then in the close-up, see how wide open it is? And then it's closed again. <laughs> in this scene, we see Jerry Quarry and Major Healy, and they're starting to walk over towards the middle of the ring. But in the very next scene right here, now all of a sudden they're behind the ring, behind the ropes. I have to give a tip of the hat to Larry Hagman in this episode. He did a lot of physical comedy in this. He did a lot of tumbles. He was falling over the ropes. He was falling on the floor. He was doing uh, backward somersaults. So he actually did a lot on this episode. So, yeah, I mean, that couldn't have been easy. And he probably had to do a lot of rehearsal for this. Also, if the referee looks familiar in this episode, this is the same actor that played Corky in the season three episode, The Mod Party, which was Major Healy's good friend. This episode is called The Indispensable Genie, and it's the one where Major Nelson and Major Healy have to see if they're compatible with each other. So in this scene, now there was some parts of this that really didn't make sense. Somebody lost track of the timeline. Major Nelson is at this malt shop, and he's, he's locked out of the house because Major Healy said that he's not allowed back in uh, the house as long as the porch light's on. And so Major Nelson has to kind of hang out somewhere while Major Healy has his date night. So Major Nelson decides he's had enough and he's going home. Roger. You had it. <laughs> so Major Nelson gets home and when we see his watch, it's two o'clock in the morning. But we find out that the date that Major Healy had had ended hours ago when he left the porch light on because it keeps burglars away. So the scene goes right to the next morning and they apologize to each other because Major Healy ends up making a, a fantastic breakfast. In the next scene, we see Major Healy coming home and you can tell that it's nighttime outside. So the whole day had gone by. And we find out that Major Nelson has been spending the entire day cleaning up all the dishes Major Healy made when he was making this fantastic breakfast. And the next scene is the following morning, and now we see that they're getting up in the morning. So an entire day has passed. 
And after all that, we see Dr. Bellows walking into the same malt shop, and he has a talk with the guy that's running this malt shop. Now, the guy at the malt shop tells Dr. Bellows that he just missed Major Nelson. Hey, uh, you just missed Major Nelson. Major Nelson in here? And boy, has he got problems oh, with his roommate. They uh, don't get along. That's what I see, uh... So the timeline makes absolutely no sense. First of all, uh, Major Nelson came home. The whole night went by. They wake up the next morning and have that uh, breakfast. And then Major Nelson spends all day cleaning up the dishes. And then we see Major Healy coming home that night. Well, then all of a sudden we go back to this scene and the, uh, the guy that runs the malt shop is telling Dr. Bell Bellows that he just missed Major Nelson. Well, how can he have just missed Major Nelson when an entire day and night went by? And then the other thing is, is even if he did just miss Major Nelson, we, see, we saw that Major Nelson got home at 2 o'clock in the morning. So first of all, what's this malt shop doing open at 2 o'clock in the morning? And why is Dr. Bellows going to a malt shop at 2 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> it, it, the whole part doesn't make any sense. When Jeannie comes home and finds the house a complete mess, there's something absolutely satisfying seeing Jeannie clean up the entire house with just a single blink. It looks fantastic. And the same thing here with the kitchen, where it's a complete disaster. And once again... <laughs> she cleans it up in just a blink and it looks immaculate. Now, Jeannie ended up making the house automatic while she was gone. So anytime Major Nelson or Major Healy said, I wish or I want, things would just happen. And of course, Roger has to go and do this little bit. You're terrible. I wish the roof would fall. <laughs> it's amazing that they actually did this stunt. And Larry Hagman and Bill Daly ended up having to do this whole stunt twice. Now, later on, um, Dr. Bellows decides he's going to split Major Nelson and Major Healy because they, they got into this huge fight. Now, in order to convince Dr. Bellows to not separate them, Jeannie ends up blinking Dr. Bellows and Mrs. Bellows into this fight, and the scene is absolutely hilarious. No, I won't either. You don't like the martini? You go fix it yourself. <laughs> when a man comes home from a hard day's work, he deserves a decent martini. Don't shout at me, Alfred! I'll shout if I want to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That is so funny. I absolutely love the Bellows. They were, they ended up being the funniest part of this entire show. Now, this is the scene where the roof caves in again because Major Healy says something to the effect of, um, just because we get into a fight doesn't mean the roof has to fall in. And then <laughs> here you can see now this time, all the actors are involved in this one. And this one's messier than the first one. Now, if you watch Amanda Bellows, um, Emmeline Henry, you'll see that she's actually getting ready for the, all the dust and debris to fall on her. <laughs> and I absolutely love that loud cry that Amanda Bellows does when it fades to black. I, th I always thought that was really cool that they did that. Now, I want to do this scene in slow motion because I just want to show you how much dust and debris they dumped on all these poor people that had to do this show. So we're going to go slow motion here. You can already see the roof starting to cave in right here. But they just dump a whole bunch of this stuff. And they really dumped a lot on them. Here you can see all this debris coming off. <laughs> you can see Emmeline Henry is just looking down. Now all that dust, I think they use this stuff called Fuller's Earth. It's kind of like a, a safer version than just dust or dirt. You can see... You can see they used a whole bunch of it. I mean, there's a lot. You can't even see them in all of that. This episode is called Genie and the Top Secret Secret. Now, this actor has appeared in this show throughout the series, and he plays a different part each time. Um, the first time I think we saw him was in the episode where Genie blinks Major Nelson back to the pirate days. The next time we saw him was in the four-part episode involving Genie getting locked in the safe. And now this time he plays a NASA officer. It seems like every time I saw this episode, they would sometimes block out the TWA logo on the little head uh, 
pieces here on the seats and sometimes they wouldn't but in this case they did you can see how they kind of used the digital kind of thing to erase it out but in other scenes like here you can see that they didn't block it out and on Jeannie's flight attendant outfit you can clearly see it right there so they didn't even bother to erase it on her uniform and even on the plane, you can see where they tried to hide it on the tail, but yet they didn't hide it up here. So maybe, I don't know, uh, there was an issue with them showing the TWA logo. I mean, they've long since been out of business a long time ago, but maybe it was just some kind of a, a thing that was going on at the time. This is also the first time we see Vinton Hayworth playing a general, but according to the credits, it's not General Schaefer. In this case, we can see that he's playing General Watson. So I guess it's before he was established as the General Schaefer character. Maybe they were still going through the transition between um, Barton McLean and Vinton Hayworth after Barton McLean passed away suddenly during the shooting of this series. This episode is called How to Marry an Astronaut. And in this scene, when Jeannie is swinging on this swing, if you look closely, when they're trying to get the close up of Barbara Eden, they actually get uh well they film it for a little too long because you can actually see the backdrop look at that you can actually see how the backdrop ends back here for the scenery and you can actually see the stage the sound stage wall it's really cool when Jeannie blinks the marriage ring out of major nelson's uh coat pocket you can actually see the wires right up here that's pulling on the uh the jacket right there and then you'll actually see the wire that's pulling the ring out too you'll see it they used thread. It looks like they used thread that, uh, I mean, you can really see it mostly at the top up here. It's quite visible. It looks like they tried to use some thread that was the same color as the uniform, but they got so close you could still see the threads. In my season three video, I mentioned how Barbara Eden told the story about how she was either in a glass or a bottle like this full of water and the crew had either broke for lunch and forgot her and left her in there, or they purposely left her in there as a joke. So it was either one of the episodes from season three, or it was this episode here, where she was left in this bottle. This episode is called The Case of My Vanishing Master, Part One. Now, while they're in the plane and they're getting ready to send Major Nelson off on a parachute, you can clearly see that the background here for the sky is just a piece of cloth or something. You can actually see the fold in it. When Jeannie blinks an earthquake in the kitchen, watch very closely this whole section right here. Now, Major Nelson, or Major Nelson's imposter, he's going to bump into this whole um, section right here and watch also these cabinets up here. He actually knocks the whole thing loose, so you can tell it's just all part of the set. So right here, okay, see how he shoves that whole piece in there? <laughs> it's pretty cool. Now, this scene in this episode always puzzled me because I don't understand why they ended up doing this. Now, if you watch closely, uh, watch Larry Hagman. He, he actually had to redub his lines. So if you watch his mouth, they do not match what he actually says here. So let me go ahead and show you how that looks. I see. I wonder if I can get Jeannie here. At least I'll know what's going on. What am I talking about? I don't even know what hemisphere I'm in. Okay, so that whole section, if you watch, he's actually even talking when his voice isn't coming out. So he says something completely different in that spot. This next part, he says, see what, what, see what I have for lunch. And you can actually tell that that is what he actually says. But then the next line, when he's tasting the food, he says something like, uh, um, veal cutlets, my favorite. And you can clearly tell that that's not what he said right there. Okay, so it's really weird. I wonder what he actually said, and I wonder why they had to change it. I've always wondered that. It's, it's been like that since it was first aired on TV. So if any of you know what he actually says right there, maybe some of you have the ability to read lips. That would be fantastic. And if you know what he said, please comment in the comments, because I would love to know what the original lines were for that part. This actor appeared in several episodes of Genie. The last time we saw him was in the four-part safe episode where Jeannie got locked in the safe and he played Professor Wiedemeyer. This is the case of the Vanishing Master part two. It was just a two-part story, but here we can see that 
Barbara Eden's belly button actually does sneak out in this scene. So the censors must not have seen that. At the end of the episode, when Jeannie exposes the phony Tony, the imposter, by having him have fake front teeth, we can see that they actually use that stuff that they put on their teeth to make it look like it's blacked out. But you can see the light reflects on it, so you can tell that it's actually just something that they use to cover his front teeth. This episode is called Rightum Astronaut, and at the very beginning of the episode when Jeannie's doing her grocery shopping, you can see that it was only 19 cents for a head of lettuce back then and two for 25 cents for carrots. I'm assuming that's for the bags of carrots. Very interesting to see the prices. Now, uh, this is the episode where Jeannie is the one millionth customer at a supermarket. She becomes the queen of the supermarket, and then she wins all these prizes, and she becomes queen of the rodeo. And then Major Nelson has to compete in the rodeo in order to win the date with Jeannie because he doesn't want... Uh, the other cowboy to win. The ending for this episode is very strange because they must have not had an ending written for it and so they decided to just completely recycle the same ending from a season two or three episode. I think it's the one where Major Nelson was dating that gangster's wife and uh, Jeannie had to help him out. But this is the exact same ending. It's the same footage and everything. So they just simply took the same footage and put it at the very end of the episode. It's very strange. This episode is called Is There a Doctor in the House? And once again, Barbara Eden plays Jeannie's mother in this episode. I couldn't find any mistakes in this episode, but one thing that I do love is they used an unusual sound effect when Dr. Bellow's robes disappear. <laughs> I love that. This episode is called The Biggest Star in Hollywood, and we get to see another rare appearance of Jeannie's cool little genie bottle case right here that she takes to Hollywood with her. I think that is such a cool prop that the prop guys actually made that for her. In this scene, when Major Nelson is trying to sneak into Jeannie's room, notice the background here. There's like a little alcove that has some decorative items right here. And he accidentally finds out that it's their own room, the room that he's sharing with Major, uh, Major Nelson is sharing with Dr. Bellows. But see this little statue right here? And there's like a little plaque or a picture right there. You'll see it when uh, Dr. Bellows comes up here. <laughs> he falls out the window. Now also you'll notice, oh, well, let me see if I can try to get back to that scene. You can really tell that this is a painted background back here because you can see the divider on the wall right in there. But now when they show the uh, reporter right here, notice he's got the same exact room. You see the alcove again. There's that plaque and there's that statue. So, I mean, it's possible that the hotel decorates every room exactly the same, but it's more likely that they're just using the exact same window set. But it's kind of funny. Now, when Jeannie and Major Nelson sneak out of the room, we see that the reporter here takes a, a picture of both of them which ends up showing, uh, showing up in the paper the next day. And here's the article, but once again, this kind of deals with the inconsistency of the series where sometimes Jeannie can be photographed, other times she can't. In the first season when she went to Hollywood, uh, she didn't show up in the movie. And then here it is, she shows up in this photograph. So, uh, you know, obviously there's different writers that write for the show, and they don't know what the other writer did before, and so they're not always staying canon with the, uh, the storyline or some of the consistencies, but... Here, once again, we see that Jeannie can be photographed after all. Now, this episode is absolutely hilarious because it's one of these episodes where there's a lot of chaos that goes on in it, and it's just so funny. Now, here you'll notice that we have three cast members from the Laugh-In TV show. We have Judy Carn, uh, Artie Johnson, and Gary Owens, who was the announcer for the show. Now, it's uh, it was from what I read, this was supposed to be a crossover episode with the TV show Laugh-In, and supposedly the idea was that Jeannie, or Barbara Eden, was going to show up on Laugh-In in her full Jeannie costume, and then they were going to zoom in on Barbara Eden's belly button to reveal her belly button on TV. And uh, I guess she was probably all for it, but somehow I think the producers or somebody was against the idea, so it never happened. But at least in this episode, we did get the crossover with the Laugh-In people. Also, uh, Judy Karn here, she showed up in a first season episode as Major Healy's girlfriend, so it's kind of cool. This is actually the second time she appears on the show. In this hilarious scene, uh, Dr. Bellows thinks that Jeannie's bottle is some aftershave lotion, so he's going to try on what he thinks is aftershave lotion. Now when he turns the bottle upside down, you'll notice that there's cushions and stuff falling out of Jeannie's bottle. Right here, there's cushions falling out, but there's no cushions that show up in his hand. 
Another odd thing is you'll notice that Hayden Rourke is already starting to react to the smell of the skunk in this scene, but Jeannie actually hasn't blinked the skunk in yet. So right here you'll notice, right here. See now he's starting to already react to the smell, <laughs> but Jeannie hasn't actually blinked the skunk. And here we'll notice. Now this skunk here that she waves in the air I think is a fake one. But then in this later scene, she's actually holding a real skunk because you'll see the skunk's feet moving. Which hopefully we'll see in this next scene. <laughs> oh my gosh, this episode is so funny. Now right here, <laughs> Major Nelson. See, now there's the real skunk. And look how cute that skunk is. It's really cool that Barbara Eden actually held a real skunk for this. This episode is called The Case of the Porcelain Puppy. Now at the very beginning of the episode, you'll notice that Major Nelson is over here looking for his hat. Now if you watch closely, he's going to be looking around over here where Jeannie's bottle is and watch the stopper of the bottle. It starts to roll away and Larry Hagman plays it off pretty well. I think he says, oops, but uh, that wasn't actually part of the script, but it's kind of neat how he plays off this little mistake. Hope, it is in the dining room, Master, with your briefcase. Oh. See right there? And you can still see that it's rolling around back here just for a little bit. It is called the Genie Journal Master. <laughs> the Genie Journal. So it's really cool how, uh, I mean, you know, that just goes to show you that a real actor or a professional actor, you know, they know how to kind of handle situations like that and just kind of go on with the scene. Now, when Major Nelson reaches for this apple, look closely at the apple over here. It's going to be a very shiny red okay. right there. And you can actually tell that what they used was probably a Christmas ball, like a glass Christmas ball, because when it falls, you can really tell that it has that kind of material to it. Oh. Okay, and you know, just looking at the pieces, especially the one right here where that's kind of rolling around. Now, I think we've all probably dropped one of those glass Christmas balls in our day, and they're made of very thin glass. So rather than make a, an apple that's a breakaway apple, they just use that instead. So Jeannie was trying out some new spells, and she was starting to turn things into pottery or porcelain. So it looks like the prop guys kind of had a heyday with this episode. If you notice, uh, Major Nelson's hat's kind of got this shine to it. And also they ended up making a briefcase that, that will actually smash. But we can see here, it's got a certain texture to the hat, especially when he puts it on his head. See, it's almost made of like a glass material, or at least that's how it looks. Now, I don't know what the prop guys made this briefcase out of to make it shatter the way it does, but you got to give them some huge credit for making this thing look the way they did. I mean, it does look like it's made of metal or something, but it's probably possibly sugar glass or something. I mean, that had to have been quite a feat of engineering for them to come up with. And they probably made more than one because when Major Nelson has to smash it on the table, you know, Larry Hagman had to get it right the first time unless they had a spare. Major Nelson throws his hat on the, uh, the hat rack here. And you're gonna notice that, I'll do it in slow motion, that it's not actually the hat. It's actually some kind of a um, another prop. Now look closely at this thing. Look how flat that is. You can clearly tell it's not his hat. It almost looks like it's a breakaway plate or something right there. And you can really see how it smashes into a bunch of pieces like that. So we'll watch it again here in slow motion. But you can kind of see how it's like a really flat thing, especially right there. You know, of course, it happens so fast that, you know, it just smashes and we're not going to notice it. And we didn't have the luxury of slow motion back then either. And here's where Major Nelson smashes the briefcase to get the report out of there. <laughs> That's pretty cool that the prop guys made that. And we see here that they even made a report out of what looks to be like porcelain as well. I don't know if you can actually see the paper in there, especially in this close-up, but Maybe there is a piece of paper embedded in there, but it's pretty uh, pretty good handiwork by the prop people. Cute little Jin Jin, the genie dog, comes back in this episode. I don't know if this is the same dog that played Jin Jin before, but uh, you gotta admit, Jin Jin's pretty cute. <laughs> genie accidentally turns Jin Jin into a porcelain dog in this episode. And now, this is another cool prop that the prop people made. Is this, uh, was it a found dog and they just kind of gussied it up a little bit? Or did they actually hand make this thing? It's pretty amazing, actually. Now, this whole scene is pretty funny where they're throwing around the dog because Major Nelson wants to smash it because he doesn't want uh, Mrs. Bellows and the art expert to find out that Jin Jin is actually like a rare Peking dog that's worth a quarter of a million dollars. So they start throwing it around 
<laughs> this whole scene is pretty funny, and of course the music is hilarious. Now when you pause this right here, if you look closely, you can see the shadow of Hayden Rourke waiting for his cue. He's actually standing right here, so Dr. Bellows, and you can see that he's waiting for the moment where he's supposed to step out. Now they're throwing this dog around, and he almost dropped it. This guy actually almost dropped it at that point, if you watch that. It's pretty, uh, pretty good catch that he did there. Now they're going to throw it out the door. <laughs> oh, this part is hilarious. Okay, now when they throw it out, he throws it out the door. Now, now you can see that Hayden Rourke is waiting out here. Now as he's talking, you'll see that Hayden Rourke starts to walk forward. He waits a couple of seconds for his cue, and then he comes back. So watch that shadow right there. See how he waits for a second, and then he comes in. And that's when he's going, what's going on here? So it's pretty neat how you can see him waiting for his, his time to come in. This episode is called Genie for the Defense. Now, at the beginning of the episode, watch the mechanics back right here, and you'll actually see the shadow of the camera as the camera pulls back. Right there. It's pretty neat how you can see that. Now, as the lady is hysterically screaming outside of the car, watch the reflection in the door right here. You'll actually see the arm for the boom microphone move across there. See it? Then when she comes back around, you'll see it move back in the other direction. Right in there. So it's cool that you can actually see that. It's interesting in this episode that Dick Sargent here makes a guest appearance when he would become the second Darren in Bewitched. And since this show and Bewitched seem to have kind of a competition between them, it's interesting that Dick Sargent would show up in Genie. So this was probably before he became a regular character of Darren on Bewitched, I'm guessing. It's also interesting to note that both this actor here and this actor both played in the episode UFO Genie. If you'll recall, uh, they played the country family. This was the father, and this was Clem, the one that was after Genie. But it's funny how they both ended up in another episode together. This episode is called Nobody Loves a Fat Astronaut. Now, Genie's sister makes an appearance again in this episode. Now when she appears, look over in this part on the uh, door right here. You'll see the shadow of the boom microphone. See it moving around? It's kind of moving up and down. Now another thing that's interesting is you'll notice in the background here, that is Barbara Eden's double because she the double's going to have to play opposite of the sister. When, and then it's the other way around when Jeannie plays Jeannie talking to her sister. So uh, Barbara Eden has to film the sister scene first with Barbara Eden's double and she'll talk to her and they'll exchange lines and then they switch places so that they can do the other half and then they put the two pieces of film together. Now when Jeannie's sister blinks, you'll notice back here in this kitchen, the lighting will change all of a sudden right here. Now see how it turned a little darker? Now that's because they changed it. Now they went to split screen, but they did it very clever. The split screen is going to be right here, and that's actually Barbara Eden walking out of here. So now Barbara Eden is actually talking to her double on this side, but because they've put the two pieces of film together, you don't see the double, of course. They don't want to see that. But it's very cool how you can kind of see uh, the transition from you know, one scene to the next, and you can see uh, her double back in there, and also how the lighting actually changed in the kitchen. Once again, Vinton Hayworth comes back as General Schaefer. Now, this is probably close to the time, if not actually the time, when uh, Barton, M Barton McLean stopped playing General Peterson. Um, you know, he had some health issues and sadly passed away during the filming of this show, and then Vinton Hayworth came in and started playing the General Schaefer character. During these episodes, you'll kind of notice it goes back and forth between Barton McLean and Vinton Hayworth, and that's because these shows didn't air in the order that they were filmed. So they, it's probably the episodes with General Schaefer were all filmed together, and then, of course, the uh, General Peterson episodes were filmed together. But somehow, during the airtime, they got mixed up. This episode is called Genie Go Round, and once again, Genie's evil sister makes an appearance. At the beginning of the nightclub scene, we can see the waiter walking by, but look at the drinks. Look how unusual these drinks look. Now let me zoom in on these, and notice how the glasses don't have any drink in them, and yet the ice cubes are colored like a tea color, or like a, uh, you know, like a bourbon color. So, you know, what's the deal with that? Are they supposed to represent drinks, and, the, and they just have colored ice cubes in there? It's very strange, but obviously, 
They are prop ice cubes. This episode is unique because it allows Barbara Eaton to show her singing talents, and she's pretty good too. But I think it's the only episode that I can remember where she actually gets to sing. In this scene, we see Jeannie's sister disguised as Jeannie. Now, I'll do this in slow motion. As she's walking towards the door, look at the shadow over here in the window. Right over here. You can actually see Bill Daly, and he's waiting for his cue. So as soon as Barbara Eden walks out, or as soon as Jeannie walks out, you can see Bill Daly waiting. Speed it up a little bit here. And then he'll you'll see him move in. And then there he goes. And now... He's ready to come in to the scene. But it's kind of cool. You can see him waiting for his cue to come in. I always find it interesting how people just walk right into Major Nelson's house without even so much as knocking. They just walk right in. <laughs> now, in this scene, uh, Mrs. Bellows notices Jeannie's bottle, and she makes reference to it right here. He cannot. Oh, Major, did you find out where you could get one of these exquisite bottles for me? No, 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 that's one of a kind. Now, what doesn't make sense about this scene is, I think it was a season two or three episode where there was an entire episode where Mrs. Bellows comes into Major Nelson's house and he takes, uh, she takes Jeannie's bottle because she loves it so much. And so um, she ends up having a copy made of it. So at this point in the series, Mrs. Bellows should have her own copy of the bottle, but here it is. She's making reference to wanting one. Now, as I mentioned previously, whenever Jeannie had to make things appear or disappear, the actors had to do this thing called the freeze, where they had to stay in place so that they could splice the two pieces of film together to make something appear and disappear. Now, it's kind of interesting in this scene, Larry Hagman, he actually had to hold this very strange uh, face, facial expression right about here. Now, watch his facial expression right here, <laughs> and then he had to hold that because uh, he had, they would say freeze, and then Barbara Eden would walk out of frame, and then he'd have to stay in that position, and then as soon as the director said action, Larry Hagman could walk again, and then that way the jump cut isn't quite so bad. But it's pretty funny that you can actually see his facial expression in that kind of strange uh, way that he had to hold that. And watching Major Healy and Dr. Bella's dance is absolutely hilarious, and this part right here... <laughs> Where Mrs. Mrs. Bellows' feather boa is slapped into Dr. Bellows' face. Now, there's this really funny scene here where Jeannie and her sister are having this big old fight and uh, using their magic powers to throw things all over the house. Now, if you watch this section of the wall, everybody's going to get under the table right here. Now, let me uh, run this through. Now, watch this part of the wall. There's a weird shadow that just kind of pops up, and you'll see it show up right there. See it? So now there it is. Now, I mean, you could probably blame it on a piece of debris that somehow, you know, got in there, but I'm pretty sure what that is is some kind of a shade for lighting because once everybody gets under the table, they probably have to reflect some light down under there so you can make sure that you see everybody. It's also interesting to note how the, the debris that's getting thrown around, it's all just a bunch of aluminum pie plates that you can see right here, see right there, especially where... Roger gets all that debris thrown at him. Now, at the end of the episode, Jeannie appears, and she locks her sister into this block of ice. Now, this is obviously her, her double, Barbara Eden's double. Now, watch closely her eye. You will actually see her blink right there. But she, and she even moves her head a little bit. And, you know, she's supposed to be frozen in ice, but you can actually see that she did blink. And once again, they use that really cool sound effect that was only used in two or three episodes right here. <laughs> that noise when it disappears is great. There's another odd thing that occurs in this scene, and I always noticed this even when I was a kid. So I'm going to do it in slow motion, but as Jeannie is yelling Master, you'll see this really bright flash of light. So let me try to do it to where we can get up to that point. Now it's right where she yelled, right there. See, what, what, what was that? What was that bright flash of light? Did they uh, have a bulb burn out or something? Or did somebody take a, a flash photograph? It's very strange. This episode is called Genie and the Secret Weapon. Now, this is Agnes, the cool little um, toy that Genie blinks. It's actually like the model of Agnes. But I've always wondered what they use to make this prop. You know, as most of you know, I collect a lot of props from TV shows and movies. But uh, this thing is very interesting. I was wondering if it was maybe a toy that they modified, but in looking at it, it looks like it's just a handmade thing. Because if we kind of zoom in on it, 
you can really kind of see how um, you can kind of see how a lot of this is just kind of tinkered together pieces and parts. So this looks like it was a cut piece of a bowl or something. That actually looks like a bowl as well. This piece here, it kind of reminds me of it, uh, like a juicer or something. It seems like that looks like a familiar piece of some kind. Up here, it looks like some random pieces of a model or something like that. And then down here at the bottom, it almost looks like pieces of an erector set that they used for the legging. And then there's some lights on there, but it's just kind of a neat little thing. Now, in the scene in the park where we see the toy maker and his son, they're out experimenting with this toy. Now, this looks like it was probably a toy that was available back in the day, and they just modified it by adding these um, kind of blades up here. And then it looks like maybe this was a futuristic looking ship or something. But if you look closely, you can see the wires right here. See the wires that are attached to the bottom here? Because this thing's going to fly up in the air. But you can clearly see them. They're like black threads. And you can see it take off right there. It's kind of cool, actually. Later on, Jeannie ends up giving Agnes to this little boy. And if you look closely, you can also see the wires on Agnes. As she starts to float up, you can see the wires here and here as it takes off. Hey, that's great! This scene with Dr. Bellows, when he sees Agnes in the park, you can tell they filmed this very early in the morning when it was still pretty cold out because you can actually see uh, Dr. Bellow's breath or Hayden Rourke's breath right here. So it was probably pretty chilly that morning. And here you can see his breath as well. Wonder how cold it was that morning. Now this fountain is actually located in the park right across the street from Major Nelson's house. But this is a very famous fountain. It shows up in a lot of shows. It shows up in a couple of episodes of Genie. It shows up in uh, The Flying Nun. In fact, Sister Bertrill or uh, Sally Field is actually seen walking around the, the rim of this. But it's mainly known for the show Friends, TV show Friends. Those of you who watch that show, at the very beginning of every episode, they show all the Friends characters playing around on this fountain, and that's the actual one. So that's a very old fountain. It's been around a long time. Now, as I mentioned in uh, previous uh, episodes of this series, this fountain has now been moved to the Warner Brothers Studios because, unfortunately, the whole Warner Ranch, Warner Brothers Ranch, where they filmed all these amazing shows, all these amazing shows, they're going to destroy this, uh, this location. I'm so sad to hear about it. It's just heartbreaking that uh, the Major Nelson House, the Bewitched House, uh, Gidget, Partridge Family, uh, Lethal Weapon, Christmas Vacation, all of those famous homes um, are all going to be demolished. They're going to demolish all of that. And I think they're going to turn it into a bunch of studios and stuff. But it's really sad. But they did want to preserve this fountain because they know how absolutely popular it is and, and how many uh, fans of Friends that there are. So it's pretty cool, I guess, that they at least managed to save it. But I wish they wouldn't destroy the whole set. Later on, we see Major Healy and Major Nelson outside of General Schaefer's office right here. But somehow we have a different actor playing the general. Now, they didn't specifically say that this character's name was General Schaefer. But they clearly walk into his office, and here he is. So, uh, you know, what happened to Vinton Hayworth that day? Was he just not available? And I think by this time, sadly, um, uh, General Peterson, the actor who played him, who was Barton McLean, had passed away. He had died during the, uh, the filming of this series. So it's very sad. I mean, maybe it was the transition time when they were be between two different uh, generals, but they did have General Shaver's name on the office door. This is episode 26, and it is the last episode from season four, and it is titled Blackmail Order Bride. Now, I gotta say, this isn't one of my favorite episodes, just because the kids in this episode are so annoying. Of course, they're meant to be that way, but they play their parts really well. Now, the, the guy on the left, he is actually a reporter disguised as a plumber, and he's trying to get the real scoop of Major Nelson's private life. Now, there's a scene that doesn't make sense right here. Now, you'll notice these red books right here. Now, he's going to remove these books, and he's going to hide a secret little uh, tape recorder and camera in here. Now, he's never been in Major Nelson's house. Now, he takes these books off, and then he sets up the device right here. And it's got a little tape recorder in there, and there's a little camera on the left. And now, just a minute, how come he's got this? Now, all of a sudden, he's got these fake set of books that he's going to use to cover this. Now, how did he know that he was going to need this fake set of books that just happens to look like the real books that Major Nelson has in his house? I mean, how was he going to know that 
he had those books on his shelf. And he can just replicate this perfectly. Which doesn't make any sense at all. You'll also notice on these books, there's a little spot right here. That was, that's for uh, the camera that's inside there, for the camera lens to see through. But you'll notice that when we get to see the inside of the book area, there is no hole for the camera to go through. So that's obviously just a little black dot or something that they just glued onto that prop. Once again, we get to hear that great sound effect that they use just in only two or three episodes. <laughs> that one right there. Now, when the reporter opens up this box, there's going to be a bunch of goopy stuff inside here, but that's because Genie blinks the can of film and stuff into this goopy stuff. But if you watch, he already opens this case, and you can already see the goopy stuff before Genie actually blinks. Your master. So see, you could already see it in there before she actually blinked. He should have waited just a couple more seconds. Now, I have to give a shout out and a thank you to one of my viewers named Larry Fishgold. So Larry, if you're watching, thank you very much for this little tip. Now, in the close-up of the marriage license right here, we can see Anthony Nelson, but we also see the name Sue Ellen. Now, Sue Ellen was the name of one of the characters in Dallas that Larry Hagman would later be known very famously for, for playing J.R. Ewing on that show. Now, I never watched Dallas. But I do know this about Sue Ellen, so it's kind of a weird coincidence that we see the name Sue Ellen on the marriage license here. And little did we know that Larry Hagman would become so famous for playing uh, on Dallas. So thank you, Larry Fishgold, for that cool little tip. I used to really dislike this episode because these kids are so annoying. But of course, you know, that's what their role is supposed to be. But they cause so much havoc in this episode. And of course, we find out that it's not uh, Major Nelson's kids, and that lady isn't his wife. It's actually the reporter, and he's trying to frame him, frame uh, Major Nelson, so he can get the real story about Major Nelson's private life. Once again, they use this frozen ice block gag that they used in the episode where Jeannie and her sister were in there that we just saw. So this is the same prop that they used for that episode. So there we go, all the mistakes, goofs, and oddities that I could find in Season 4. If any of you have seen any that I missed, any bloopers or whatever, uh, please mention them down in the comments below. I'd really like to check those out. But I try to remember all the ones I can remember and try to show them here and share them with you because <laughs> they're uh, really fun to spot these kind of things. But this would be season four. I'm going to start working on season five. Season five will be their last season. And it'll be interesting to go through that one because um, a lot of fans didn't care for season five because that's when Major Nelson and Jeannie get married. And for a lot of people, um, it, it kind of ruined the show. And in fact, Larry Hagman and Barbara Eden said that marrying off those two characters is what killed the show. Um, I don't know. I'll have to see going through those episodes if I felt the same way. I actually liked the last season because Dr. Bellows and Mrs. Bellows are in a lot of episodes of, that are just hilarious. But we'll check that out when I get to that point. But in the meantime, I hope you're enjoying all these videos and this series. And if you are, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe too if you'd like. I'd really appreciate that. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you on the next video and have a good one.